So we had $216 million lost in liquidation in the last 24 hours. That's nearly 45,000 traders. Just to remind ourselves that this is risky. These numbers are actually on the low side. There are always people betting in both directions. So a lot of people might have thought, oh, Bitcoin's crashing, it's going to go to 10 and place highly leveraged bets. Short. Since Bitcoin's going up at the moment, they got liquidated. So trading wise, it shouldn't matter whether it's going up or down. You can make money, you can make money either way. We can see here that the liquidation volume is down 24% in the last 24 hours. So it's not traumatic. There's, there was no shock overnight. Long short, it's pretty balanced. Open interest, I haven't been following these. So today we look at what I call the Z score. The fuller name is MVRZ RV Z score. So what that is is the market cap minus the realized cap divided by the standard deviation, standard deviation of the market cap. And these are in dollars. So the market cap is the number of bitcoins multiplied by the last price that was traded while the realized cap is if you add up what all the bitcoin that exist were bought for so if you had say a million bitcoin and they all cost one dollar then the market cap would be one million if then one of them the, the the last bitcoin was sold for say a thousand dollars then the realized cap would be a million and ninety nine hundred ninety nine or something like that so it'd be a million and there was one that was bought for a thousand while the market cap would be a million multiplied by a thousand so here we're looking at the ratio of the two and that has basically been an excellent signal as to when we've uh, reached the peak the exact formula is given here the market cap minus the realized cap divided by the standard stand by divided by the standard deviation and we can see it's nicely labeled the black line is the market cap the golden line is the realized cap and the brown is the Z score. What's great is we can see how accurate it is. So again, when the Z score is in the red zone, we should be selling. When it's in the green zone, we should be buying. So in all the cases, it's done really well. What I like is how clean it is. It's not a vague, oh, we're in the red zone. It, it's very briefly in the red zone. So it, this very, this localizes when it's saying we should sell. It's not giving a general suggestion. It's kind of going beep, 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 sell which is what I ideally would like. So here as well, we can see sell, 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 and it got it right at the top. Note, 
we had a couple of peaks along the way. But we weren't even close to getting a signal to sell. And recently, when we shot up to 65,000 or whatever, again, we weren't near to a sell signal. So if you are following the Z score, you wouldn't have been tempted to sell, even though the Pi cycle indicator said sell. As I said, I didn't, and a lot of people didn't sell from the recent Pi, signal, uh, pi cycle sign, signal. And this is why the, the other signals didn't confirm what the Pi cycle was saying. We basically like having multiple signals so we can make, uh, we, we, we get to look at the situation from multiple perspectives. So that's basically it, you know, the, what, what, what is it that I'd like? I want a method to tell me when I should sell at what I think is the peak. And this does very well, as has the Pi cycle, but the Pi cycle was backfitted to historical data to agree with what we knew the answer was. Well, this isn't, well, this wasn't. This is more fundamentally uh, driven. So, yeah, I would say of all the methods, uh, this would be the one I like the one I intend to use. This isn't in the Bybit website. So the other things we were looking at were at the bybit.com, I think the page was. Yeah, bybt.com. This is lookintobitcoin.com and it has multiple charts. It probably has the other charts here as well because they are the best methods. Well, they're the ones that um, people are paying attention to, that, that seem to be the best. As, a, as you can see, you know, it has more into, the disc, into how, uh, what the indicator is, how it should be used, and so on. I'll have a look at, so it was created by Murad Mamudov and David Poole. So remember we saw the Poole indicator. That's Poole again, I imagine. Unless there are two different Poole's who both happen to be really good at uh, indicators for Bitcoin. So that's what I wanted to look at today. Um, this is another, um, no, sorry, this is the first one we really looked at. This is a, uh, on-chain analysis type indicator. So the Z-score uses blockchain analysis. So any transactions done using Bitcoin are recorded on, a, on the permanent record. So people can just get that permanent record. It's basically like some a set of accounts and then analyze that a classic data analysis problem. So people, you can access that uh, blockchain and it's readily available. I mean, the whole, or one of the points of uh, Bitcoin is the transparency that we can all see what happened. And one of the things is you need to have a kind of democratic vote to see whether people accept any changes that are made to it. So if a transaction is made, essentially the community has to have to agree, have to decide to accept whether that was a legitimate, whether that was a real transaction or not. And that's the whole decentralized, decentralized theme. I mean, there's so much to Bitcoin. Um, so I'm always picking up more. It's not just a technical thing. There's a whole nearly uh, spiritual, uh, philosophical, political. There, there, I mean, there are, there are many different perspectives that 
you can approach Bitcoin from. But one of the ones that I was aware of earlier on or early on and which I find very attractive in it is the degree that it is decentralized. Decisions are not made by uh, some senior experts in a closed room. So we don't know what exactly happened. But they agree, oh, this is what should be done. Basically because historically, whenever that happens, the people in the room decide that they should get a lot of money. And they do really well. And the general public suffer. That's a theme that I might touch on down the line. I, 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 I This is the quant channel. I basically want to focus on the technical side of things, looking at the data, basically answering problems in a kind of scientific manner for the next while. Then I want to look at the people who basically I learned from. So I would be comfortable with maths, computers, technical things. The guys I learned from, a lot of them mainly on YouTube and some on podcasts, they are traders. They, they or some of them, uh, they have lots of experience. I rapidly was able to identify that these guys seem to be onto something. They seem to be able to see deeper than I can. I can pick up a book, read it, learn it. But, and, and sorry, I can pick up a book, read it and learn it. And I have from, from many books. But I could see watching their videos that they were talking about something else. What they were saying wasn't in any of the books I'd seen, which caught my interest. And then I saw that they seemed to be repeatedly correct. They seemed to be able to see that, oh, this is going to happen. They said this is going to happen. And then it happened. And these were like shocks. I'd be watching CNBC and other news sources. They were saying something. He was saying exactly the opposite. And he was right again and again and again. And not only that, they were showing, they're showing me or they're telling everyone how they came to that conclusion. It wasn't a random, oh, I say you should do this. They went through a step by step process and they were able to see deeper. They were able to understand better than I could. And they were doing this for free. So it is still amazing that they're so generous with their time. Um, and in a way, in general, their thought process is, I don't, you know, I have all the money and whatever I need. Because if you're able to trade Bitcoin and if you were, if you got on early, you basically would have made so much money that you would never have expected to. Um, so now they're worried, now they're more concerned, now they're more focused on essentially helping people, um, and doing good. So that's amazing because one of the negatives for me in finance was there's such a nasty side to it, you know, that, um, there's so much corruption, there's so much people destroy countries, societies, whatever, make making money that, you know, it, it, there's a, it's not a good thing in, in many ways. So, and I, I to me, that was always a, uh, that always put me off that, oh, this is an interesting problem, but do I want to be working? Do, is this what I want to be, do? Um, or do I want to pretend that's not the case and ignore it? That would be that would be kind of at the back of my mind. And here it's it, it's so opposite. Here you had people who were giving better content than I'd ever come across. 
they were spending, they were generously giving so much of their time and they were just trying, they were just delighted helping people, doing good. And that is the case. I'll get around to that in, in a bit. So I want to look at a few more technical things. Then I'll swing back to all these people who have largely influenced me um, in my Bitcoin knowledge. Uh, they are all remarkable. So I'll probably create a playlist and I'll introduce maybe a bit. I'll talk a bit about each of them and how I came across them and why I think they're great. Uh, but one step at a time. Next time, I want so much look at one indicator like this one. Again, this is my favorite one, but on chain analytics. So there are multiple things that you can see from the blockchain. So I'll just do a quick one looking at several things that are commonly looked at. This I'll probably use uh, things that other people have created so that it'll be nice and easy for me. I'll just see here are the three, four, five, six different things that you can see from the blockchain which we should look we should keep an eye on oh final thing um this is from looking into bitcoin this kind of analysis comes from um another site i think and that's that's kind of a, a that's a membership site or you pay f to get this a and this chart is updated you know uh, if you if you have the paid membership this is the free one and the free one is lagging a bit so this is one day behind so okay I, I, I don't today's August 1st this is up to I think uh, it was 30th July as far yeah 30th July so you know we're one day behind and if we look at these plots it doesn't make that much difference. I mean, um, it's normally very high just the day before the peak. And if you sell the day after, it might not, it might not be, it, again, it's not going to be exactly at the highest price. But this gives me a very narrow window. I mean, I, I might be a day off. But that's better than anything else that I'm aware of. So I'll be looking more at a range of blockchain, um, I don't know, signals or indicators, various bits of information that we can get from the blockchain in a, a quick summary in one video. See you then.